Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Felipe Jaramillo. I'm the CEO of Aplica, an easy partner in Colombia. I'm going to be talking about uh, multi-site development with easy platform. Um, so this talk is not going to be a, a, a technical only, so I want to make it uh, approachable to uh, both uh, people well-versed in the technical um, aspects of, of, of easy platform as well as, uh, as, as more uh, either newcomers or, or more uh, strategy people uh, when we're talking about multi-site. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm the CEO of Applica. Uh, we are Ibexa Easy Platform Specialists. We've been partners since 2006. Um, our, our, our main experience is with large-scale plans. We got into um, several uh, you know, top, top 10,000 uh, sites. Um, we are, um, we are located, as, as I said, in Colombia, um, but we work internationally. We've moved into an agency-only model internationally where we uh, only uh, sell our services through, uh, through partners um, uh, to deliver uh, our solutions. Um, we were lucky enough to win the Easy Honorary Award in, in Malaga in, in January, and that was uh, very rewarding, especially because it was my last international trip. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, multi-site with Easy Platform uh, and talk about some, some of the strategies and the options for, um, for multi-site. So, uh, so first is, is when do we want to use multi-site? And um, essentially, you use multi-site when you, you want to host multiple sites on a single uh, uh, platform. Uh, and this is very common for, for these use cases, when you have multiple brands. Um, when you have a group of companies with subsidiaries, for example, so you want to have governance around those sites, uh, you want to leave your subsidiaries with freedom to manage their content, but you also want to have some, uh, some uh, closer control over, over, over the platform, over security, over performance. Um, uh, regional sites are also very common. You have organizations that have multiple languages, multiple regions, um, and they want to they want to uh, maintain those sites uh, uh, in a unified manner. You also have um, multi language. You may have a single site with with audiences from uh, from different uh, backgrounds, um, or you may have different projects or initiatives. So you have a special project that that, that needs its own its own uh, uh, its own site. Uh, you may also have events, or as we've seen many in many cases you can have all of the above. So, so complex organizations can have all of these at the same time, and, uh, and they're looking for a solution that can manage this uh, in, a, in, a, in a sane manner. Um, so we got into multi-site very early on in our, in our, in our, in our, uh, in our involvement with Easy. We got uh, our, one of our first large-scale projects was uh, Grupo OPSA, which is one of the largest newspapers in, in Honduras. And the first thing they said is, you know what, we have this newspaper, but we also have another newspaper, and we want to have uh, uh, a, uh, a sports uh, newspaper, which very quickly became one of the most popular websites in, in, uh, in the country, being uh, a soccer-centric uh, uh, company. So, um, it's country, sorry. So, uh, we also do, we did multinational like PGI, we also did these issues in Quicksilver with all of the regional sites. Uh, we did uh, we, uh, Grupo Energia Bogotá, which manages their subsidiaries. They have around 10 subsidiaries uh, in different parts of Latin America. And we also have the Bogotá Chamber of Commerce, uh, which I'll talk about in, in, in a minute. Um, the Bogotá Chamber of Commerce is a very good case, and I'll use it to illustrate some of these principles. It, it was nominated for the best user experience uh, for the Easy Awards. The main site for the Chamber of Commerce is very popular. Um, you know, we can have, for a, a business-oriented site, we can have you know, 200,000 visitors a day. Um, but what they had was a, a, a network of sites. So they have all of these uh, very important initiatives for different uh, industry variables. So they have Artbo for the art um, industry in the, in, in the city. So they have this very large art fair. They have this music market for musicians and bands and, uh, and, and exporting uh, entertainment. They also have the Bogota Fashion Week. They also have this uh, culinary event, Bogota Madrid Fusion, which has which uh, brings in a lot of uh, well-known chefs. They have this cluster um, 
uh, approach where you have different industry clusters get together and discuss. We also have the um, uh, arbitrage um, uh, unit of the Chamber of Commerce. So basically in, 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 in the past few years, we've built around 18 initiatives, all running on the same easy installation. Um, so why do you want to do this? Well, you want to have, you want to have an integrated experience. You want to have uh, experience, integrated experience for users to be able to jump around those sites uh, fluidly. You can have editorial efficiency. You have a single editorial team or you have segregated editorial teams that can manage the content on the different sites. Uh, very quickly, you don't have multiple logins. You just go in and edit the content. Um, you have you know, a shared technical structure, you have shared code, you have shared integrations, which in, in, in complex sites may be, may be tricky, you have shared infrastructure. Um, you may share some of the templates or front-end components. Um, you have faster deployments uh, and you can also have faster de development. So when you have this, this platform, you can start products very quickly. You may have, you know, contracting in place. You can have, uh, you can leverage a lot of the things that, are, that are, uh, have been done in the past. In the end, this gives you a better return on investment on, on, on digital experience projects. So there are different approaches. So one approach is to have a multi-site with a single repository. That means in easy speak, that is a single database, right? You have parallel sites in the content tree. So the first thing you do is that you create your sites as the first uh, layer below the, the main node. Uh, so you create one, let's say site for, uh, um, site container uh, below the main node, uh, and you use the concept of site accesses to configure the designs, the access methods uh, that are going to be used, right? Um, so essentially, this is, this is a view of one of our multi-site installations. Each one of these elements in the right is an independent site. Um, the other approach which is possible is the mo what's called multiple repositories. So in, 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 in essence, you are having the same installation but you're having separate content and separate users. So you use the site access to configure, firstly, a database. So you have a separate database. Um, you also configure the domains, the access methods, and the root node. But you're essentially reutilizing um, an installation and infrastructure, um, whereas the content is still separated and the users are still separated. Another key component here is using uh, languages and localization. So this is very powerful in terms of its, its, its language engine and also its localization options. Uh, the language engine is, 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 is very interesting because it, you can have multiple languages in a single site. And that, that, that may be counterintuitive to some people, but essentially you can define a main language on a site and you can also define fallback languages. And what this allows you is to have content that is visible in different sites using the, let's say the fallback language, let's say English US. And if you have specific content for a particular country, you just translate it from English US to English UK. And this, you will put the UK specific content. And this would allow you, uh, will allow you to expose the site broadly uh, where only a few pages are specific for a particular country, right? So this allows regional sites uh, um, to reuse a lot of content, but also to retain their, their options. Uh, for, for, for custom content. And sites can have a specific locale um, for currency and dates and other stuff, okay? Uh, a, a key point here is, 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 is leveraging the, the user role, um, the users and role system in, in easy. So um, having shared users allows you to have both a, a, a overarching senior administrators or senior agents who, who can edit the content everywhere, but also uh, it allows you to put in some limitations around some roles where people can say, you can say, okay, this editor can edit everything, um, uh, every content type, but only in this particular part of the subtree. So this allows you to, have, to reuse roles very easily and to have you know, an easy to understand role a system where you apply limitations to uh, user groups or users. Um, also, you can, you can reuse uh, single sign-on or custom, custom login handlers. So we have cu customers who have, uh, you know, LDAP or who have uh, Active Directory or, or different mechanisms for login where you can reuse that, that login integration and you can actually leverage it uh, in, in different sites. Um, 
something that uh, probably Peter was, was talking about earlier is, is, is before uh, what we had or, or traditionally what we've had is you need to, for creating a new site, you need to create a deployment. You, it's, it's sort of a, let's say, a lightweight development project, but essentially you're changing the code base to, uh, to bring up a new site. Uh, some um, editors and some customers would say, I want to do this quicker. Right, I, I have sites that may only live for a few days. I want to have more flexibility around this. Um, so uh, Site Factory in version three allows you to create sites from the admin interface um, without having to do any deployments. You can organize the sites in groups <clears throat> and, the, and the admin user will be able to choose between uh, the available designs. For, for bringing up this new site. It is not the same as doing it the other way. So essentially, uh, probably you can provide some guidance around this, but essentially this is more like a lightweight uh, multi-site uh, solution. Whereas if you know the site is gonna live uh, a long time, you're gonna have a custom integration, so you're probably going to use the, the other approach. But this gives you flexibility, like quicker sites or more, more robust, uh, long, longer lasting sites. So, a key <coughs> component in managing multi-site is managing the front end. Mm. You'll have multiple designs, you'll have multiple presentation layers, and that, I, I think there are a lot of challenges around this, and um, I want to, to share some of the uh, options you have. Um, so first is the, the easy uh, platform design engine. So it's, it's been recently improved, it's, it's bringing back some of the, of the early principles in, in managing designs, but essentially what you, what you can have is a, a site can have multiple designs. And again, counterintuitively, you would say, why would I want to have multiple designs? Well, it's useful for designing by levels. For example, you may have a corporate um, uh, global design. You may have a, an energy subsidiary uh, design uh, element, which may encompass, let's say, a, a specific header, you know, a specific footer or some variation of that corporate design, and then you may have a specific company. So this idea of having a layer design allows you to maintain design resources very efficiently while allowing a particular site to, uh, to override or to customize the way they're presented. So this uses the model of, desi of designs and themes where basically you can mix and match uh, different, different design elements for, for sites. Um, so now we have this, this trend with headless uh, and, uh, and using GraphQL, and that's, that, that sounds very good. Some CMS systems are headless only, some CMS systems are non-headless, uh, and Easy has, um, uh, let's say, the two models. And actually, Yanni, uh, who is probably in, in the session, gave a, a talk around integrating Easy with Gatsby. Um, and that sounds very good, but you will you very quickly discover that this has certain limitations for building like a major brand, you know, 10,000, 20,000 page uh, site, but it may be very useful for some of these event sites, for some of these, pro some of these program sites, for some of these, let's say, smaller brand sites. So what you will use is GraphQL will allow you to extract content in a modern way, uh, uh, and you can use static sites, uh, static sites, static site generators like Gatsby uh, that uses React or like uh, Gridsome that uses VJAs. And basically this generation will, will fetch all of the content and will generate static pages. That's fantastic for, for, for certain use cases, which are more simple, you know, nothing gets faster than a static site. Or you can use this uh, server side frameworks for JavaScript using React or Vue.js where you can build more sophisticated sites. So you have, you have the options and you have uh, GraphQL as the way Easy exposes these, um, the, the content. Um, so there are some opportunities in this model. Uh, you can have a hybrid model, and I think that's very, very powerful. You have traditional model, you have headless, and you have, have semi-headless, which you probably haven't heard about, and I'll talk about in a minute because that's sort of our, 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 our modern approach to building sites. Um, so you have decoupled front-end development, and that's very important when you have multiple teams. Um, and you want to give them the freedom to, um, to design their, their, their own front end, to, to manage the front end layer um, without affecting each other. You have very static sites, if applicable with, with, the, with, the, with the static uh, generators. Some considerations is that GraphQL works, but 
from what I understand, uh, it works with multi-sig, but only with single repository. So, so you will only use a single database, um, which is normally what we use. Uh, really, it's, 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 it's rare that we use the, the multi-repository approach. But um, GraphQL works on a multi-site environment. You can, have, uh, you, ha you can have static sites that take time to regenerate. Uh, that's kind of a pain. You can have highly complex sites that you know, may have hidden pitfalls. Some things may be super easy with Twig, and then you start doing them in, 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 um, in Gatsby or in static site gener generators, and it's, and, and it's hard. The Jamstack development is in rapid evolution. This JavaScript uh, API and markup the tool set is very big. There are a lot of competing tools and a lot of ways to approach this. So it, it has its, its natural complexity. So we sort of go for a, a, a hybrid model. So for design, we've, we've adopted what's called atomic design, right? So you have a design elements that are composed into more sophisticated uh, uh, elements. So that the, the concept of atomic design is you have atoms, very small units, you have molecules composed of atoms, you have organisms composed of molecules, and you have templates composed of organisms. So this allows you to, um, to disaggregate uh, your design into multiple elements. And we're designing uh, with, with uh, these tools um, for the past few years. So basically you, you have the front end developers create all of these components and you have um, what's called a design system, right? That you can, that you can uh, reuse, that, that, that is very easy to understand. Um, so here comes our, our, our approach to semi-headless. So what we call semi-headless is we separate the front end from the back end and you, we use unique uh, code repositories for each site. So our front end developers will interact with the front end on individual uh, Git repositories. Um, this is easier and lighter development, so I can have a, a, a developer working on, on, on a site very quickly on the front end of a site. Um, and we have special workflows and, that are front end centric uh, for deploying the front end to production. So these repositories are not only for reference, it is actually the front end that is being, um, uh, the front end assets that are being uh, exposed in production. And this covers CSS, um, um, minimized JavaScript, uh, design assets, these kind of things are all contained in these repositories. And these repositories are standalone. So I can develop the full front end using this design system that I showed earlier um, without having to deal with this. So I can, I can work on the, on the front end, I can deploy the front end without, without uh, affecting uh, the, the, easy, the easy development workflow. Uh, the only thing naturally is that you have the templates. The actual Twig templates require just a process where somebody goes in and sees a pull request on this on these repositories, uh, and they will convert that HTML, that base HTML for from the um, from the design system into the um, uh, into the Twig template. So Easy is essentially a Twig template uh, processor, uh, and everything else from the front end is 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 hosted elsewhere. Um, so the, one of our advantages is deploying independently. And you will think, well, that's not a big problem. But when you have a, a, a multi-site installation that has uh, 20, uh, 20 sites, you want to be careful about deploying, right? Um, you can use CDN, fingerprinting, asset version. You can use a very modern front-end approach um, without, without affecting everything else. You can develop separately. You can have your unique frameworks, languages, tool sets. Um, it's, it's much easier to roll back. So if you have a design, it, something's wrong, you can easily roll it back without affecting any of the sites. And our developers start working on the front end layer very, very quickly. Uh, and I think that's been um, a, a very important improvement to our workflow, uh, particularly um, with multi-site, even though we use it for everything else. So some considerations to keep in mind. So stability is key. So when you have a, multiple, a, a multi-site installation, all sites can crash at the same time. They are, they are subject to crash. Somebody doing you know, a small brand uh, site may, um, may make a mistake, may, may deploy some code that is not production ready, and they may kill all the sites. So we learned this the hard way, um, uh, and we've, we've built you know, mechanisms to protect around this. So one is naturally having a continuous integration processes, continuous de de deployment, where you, have, um, where you have ways of, of, of testing, uh, where you have automated tests, where you have a, a ways of 
discovering that something is wrong in a, in a, in a particular site. And you have very strong monitoring using transaction monitoring. You can go in and check that you know, pages are not changing after, after any, any, any development. Um, this model for multi-site, when you're having shared repositories and shared code bases, sort of favors a single vendor model. That means you want to have you know, a, a, a stable team managing the, the, the implementation. When you have multiple vendors, multiple teams working at the same time, they don't talk to each other. Uh, they, may be, they may be, in some case, competing vendors you may are, um, get into, into, into issues when you have the stability of the sites compromised by a, uh, by a deployment. Um, now, let's say you want to use multi-vendor and you want to say, I have, this agent, I have multiple agencies or multiple developers managing this. We would favor something like the Easy Platform Cloud approach where you have multiple easy installations. This, we, we could do this all along, uh, but the main difference is that right now, Easy Platform Cloud and container-based approaches make this much easier to maintain. So one of the problems we had is that once you had multiple sites coexisting and multiple installations in multiple sites, maintaining this, uh, maintain, uh, applying patches and maintaining the code base would be a cumbersome process. Whereas with, um, with CICD workflows with uh, an easy platform cloud uh, type of approach, you can, you can manage this and, and you know, not, not lose your hair, <laughs> like me. Anyway, uh, I know a final, final set of considerations. You can, it's, it's easier to spin off sites than to consolidate. That means if you start and you create sites separately on separate installations, it's, it's harder to consolidate them on a single site. On the other hand, it's easier to spin off a site. So somebody says, okay, you know, uh, somebody bought uh, one of the companies in, in, your, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the group of companies, you want to spin it up, you can easily uh, duplicate the site, remove all of the uh, other site content and essentially get an independent installation relatively easy. Whereas it's, 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 it's better, it, it's harder to, 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 uh, to consolidate, so it's better to start with multi-site. Um, updates are key, so that's a, a very important factor. When, when you have new versions of Easy and you have some sites that are not um, that are not going to be upgraded, that are not being upgraded at, at some point, you may be holding off your ability to develop on the latest versions of Easy. So, uh, um, so having, this up, having a, a strong upgrade model, and if you know that a, a particular site is not going to live in two years, and you want to have that site uh, sort of be phased, 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 phased down, um, you may want to just spin it off uh, have a separate installation for that and keep your other sites up to date. Um, Easy has made this, uh, as, you know, better and, and worse in the sense that new versions of Easy always have very strong backwards compatibility. So customers can somehow defer this choice for a while when they are able to run older versions or newer versions and they have sort of this, this hybrid model and, um, at some point, they're going to have to upgrade. So our, our, our general guideline is to, is to keep upgrades uh, uh, timely and to, um, and, to, um, and, and to spin off the sites uh, if, if they're not going to be upgraded. Um, that's basically what I had to share. I don't know if you want to open uh, for questions or... Um, Andrew? Yeah, so we do have already one question from Felix. Uh, do you see it, or you want me to read it up? I see it. <laughs> can you? Can you? Okay. So, hi, Felipe. Great talk. How do you deal with deployments and releases in a multi-site environment? For example, what if a release should only be rolled out to some sites, but not all? So that, that that's interesting. So when you have a when you have a, a, a unified code base. Essentially, when you make the update, that the the, the kernel, the code, the, the yeah, the core is going to be updated to, to everybody at the same time, and that's yeah, how, and that's uh, specifically it's referring to design changes, and not necessarily an easy version update. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, to the design changes. Yeah. Okay, so design changes are deployed independently as I showed in, in, uh, in, 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 in my slide. So this is a separate code base, and I can deploy design changes 
um, I can deploy design changes independently of, of, of each other. So these are, let's say, the CS, you, you can change CSS, you can change JavaScript, you can change images, um, and you have, and you have a, a, let's say, the, the, the Twig templates. So for the Twig templates, we, we have one bundle for each of the sites. Uh, uh, so basically, we have developers access the Twig templates, and we will essentially make a deployment, a multi-site deployment, where we have just a few Twig templates that have changed. If the Twig templates change, if they haven't changed, and we're just changing CSS, uh, content assets, we just have a separate workflow for deploying this uh, into production. Because it's essentially not easy. Not, not, not easy, not easy, yet, right? It's, it's easy, but it's not, it's, not, it's not changing the CMS itself. Um, so that gives us a lot of flexibility. And, and if you look at it, I would say 90% of deployments are dealing with, with style sheets. They're dealing with, with JavaScript. They're, they're, they're dealing with, with the content images. So we are able to separate the deployment workflow and also the rollbacks um, from uh, the multi-site engine. OK. Um, so uh, yeah, and a, a follow-up question from Felix. Thanks, but and this is great for headless. But what about easy page builder? You can. It's the same. It's the same. So we call it headless, but this works for the page builder. So what, what I'm showing here is actually uh, traditional sites that use the page builder, even right. So um, so all the design assets for those sites, traditional sites. Are you are for are, are used following this approach? Um, uh, if you're talking about the page builder pages, where you have you may have preview, you may have ways of of of, of testing your changes before they go live, just from the content side. Uh, but this approach is not for headless site. The thing is, what is the the idea of headless? Right, that you have a separate front end and a separate user experience uh, managed elsewhere. Right. Here, what we're doing is we're lightening the load on easy for, um, for headless. So we're just saying, you know what? You don't need to store CSS. You don't need to store um, um, JavaScript. You don't need to store uh, design assets. We'll manage this elsewhere. So it's only uh, a series of, of, uh, of templates that we're managing. OK. In. Thank you, Felipe. And that was, uh, and also there came in a uh, thanks from Felix. So um, any, uh, there doesn't seem to be any more questions. I think we are done. Thank you, Felita. All right. Thank you all.